This is Trey Guillotine, and we are here with some of the Driftwood editors. Can you all introduce yourselves? Jack Wagerspauer, the current editor-in-chief. Veronica Lee, entertainment editor. And we're talking about the issue today of mental health and journalism. Uh, what journalists with mental health could be going through, the challenges that they face, how they overcome it. Would y'all uh, like to talk about a little about your own mental health challenges, things that y'all deal with just on a personal basis? Okay, so basically like, the most like challenging part of it all is definitely like the anxiety of it. Um, not necessarily like, writing the articles themselves, but kind of just giving that part of me to whoever reads it. A lot of anxiety coming from students and faculty who might not necessarily agree with what I have to say or what my staff has to say. And like it ulti- ultimately like falling onto me because like I am the boss. So like regardless if it's good or bad, like it's going to get back to me. A lot of that, but also like, I feel it's also a big part of helping my anxiety and it's making me get out of my comfort zone and it just keeps me uncomfortable like all the time, which sometimes good or bad, but usually good. I myself struggle with a lot of anxiety, which I think is why primarily in my career I've kind of gravitated towards entertainment um, because, you know, uh, entertainment is normally pretty positive, fun ground. Most people like to talk about it. It does get really hard when you feel like, you know, even in the entertainment industry, people will tear apart your work. There's a rule in journalism that I learned a long time ago, don't read the comments. Um, which is really hard because as a writer um, or even times just editorializing and sharing your opinion, you want to feel validation. You want to feel this connection with human beings that other people understand and respect your point of view. But I mean, especially with the internet, it's, it's brutal out there. For somebody with anxiety, that can be really scary. I've thrown up. <laughs> yeah, I really have. Like, I I used to be, like, this is maybe TMI, like, a serial puker. Like, I would get so nervous that I would just start throwing up. Like, I used to cry. Like, even, like, in the beginning of this semester, like, with the brand new staff and emailing and all, like, I would just cry sending out emails for no reason. But I'm like, what if they, like, really hate this email? Like, what if it's, like, too long? Like, I didn't send it at the right time? And, like, ultimately, I started, like, texting at, like, 4 a.m. But, like, yeah, that was tough. Yeah, uh, I remember the first time that I did an interview for the Driftwood was for uh, New Orleans Comic Con, and I was trying to find one of the artists to interview, and I kind of just picked one. And like when I went to talk to him, it was really nice, and the interview went great. But then as I was leaving, it looked like the other artists around them or, or around him like wanted to were like, "Am I going to ask them for an interview?" I was like, "No, no, no." Yeah, and I was right. like, backed away. I was like, "I'm running now." <laughs> yeah. Um, else. Yeah. No one else. I just said, no. So that's fine. And I've actually gotten this question when I've talked to people uh, about what I want to do and about mental health. And there's like, if you have these things, why do you want to be in journalism? Because that's ultimately my goal. So I ask you the same. I'm why... throwing my hands up. You cannot see that because this is not a video, but yeah. I'm throwing my hands up. Yeah. Uh, why do you want to work in journalism or what is it about journalism that you enjoy doing? There's just something about art, like music and television and film Um, that these things really bring people together and I love that like I you know even if it's something that like I'm not like personally into or that I don't know a lot about like even just coming to this office and hearing like you and Jesse talk about Pokemon and stuff like I love that energy that people feel um, as a result of creative things and for me um, that motivates me. And then I came on staff last year as a news editor, and I was like, damn, I really love starting shit. Like, yeah. this is so much fun. This is like, this is a great profession. Like, I get paid to, like, start shit? Absolutely. So, I mean, I guess <laughs> definitely being the front line of, like, getting info first mm-hmm. and, like, being able to share that with people and have them basically just see it is amazing. Is- the biggest reason to do it but also just to like give other people platforms like i love spotlighting people like that was my favorite thing that was my favorite favorite thing last year to just spot like random students and see how excited they got to like be in the paper i love that that's like it's a really great feeling just to do that i the thing i love about it is talking about the things that i love 
and that's why I feel really lucky to be on the Driftwood, like, doing the entertainment. Like, I get to talk with people and write about video games and movies and TV shows, and I love that. Um, and I love sharing that, and also, like you said, with Jesse, hearing what Jesse loves to talk about and that passion, and just, you know, being able to kind of share that has kind of been my big thing with why I want to be in journalism. As you've been working in journalism with your mental health issues, uh, what are some ways that you've kind of managed to cope? My favorite is just going back and seeing people like me who've done it before and like read the comments on their posts. Cause man, if I thought the comments on my articles were bad, oh God, you gotta see it from someone bigger than me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Cause they yeah. get it 20 times That's worse. A, yeah, my friend who is um, like the head reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, I mean, he has people write daily, like even politicians, like, I hope you die. Like, and he's just like, meh. Like, I'm like I, how? I, how are you I like this? I cried off this like 20 times I a know. week. I like, know. And that's one thing, too. I think some people have no idea actually how hard it is to work on any kind of word processor oh, God, and translate it mm. into InDesign. <laughs> Anybody who just thinks that journalism, like, or journalists are just idiots, like, that make these typos all the time, like... Do me a favor, go take like an InDesign class and then come back to me and tell me how easy it is. Like, I'm on like my eighth cup of coffee, like <laughs> reading this article for like the seventh time. Like I so I can't spell my own last name at this point. Right, yeah. Like I'm gonna misspell your last name. Right. And also mine. And it's gonna be okay. Right. We're gonna get through this. It's gonna be fine. What are what is some advice that you could give uh, current or even future journalists that might be kind of have the same feelings, dealing with the same issues uh, that are, you know, that they may have some fears going into this kind of profession? Most of the time, if you're not coming in hot to people and you're genuinely from a place of curiosity and interest and you genuinely want to know about another person, most people are actually very flattered by that even if they politically disagree with you and you're reaching out to get a comment. Um, so just know that because human beings, if social media can tell us anything about likes and whatnot, is like are seeking connections with others. I think like my biggest thing, and y'all know I say this like 20 times a day, is like who's gonna check me? Cause at, <laughs> at the end of the day, nobody will check you. Mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be somebody upset with what you say because nobody is ever going to always agree with you. Um, and they'll leave their comments and they'll leave, you know, their letters to the editor. But at the end of the day, nobody is going to check you. You just do what you do. You surround yourself with a good staff that, you know, just supports each other. And that's really the biggest thing, just supporting, just surrounding yourself with others like you who have the same common goal is just do that. Cool. Jack really like blows my mind. Like, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say, but like working with him like this time on Driftwood is like he's seriously one of the bravest people I've ever. Even though he says that, like, I know you have anxiety, but like you just deal with it. You know, you like do. that's what you have to do. At sometimes. your age, I was puking my guts up from anxiety. <laughs> like, couldn't keep any food down. I'm telling you. So it's really amazing. It takes a village, and that village is Driftwood. That's gonna I'm be the, that's, heavy metal. That is the title of this of this uh, podcast. Now. It takes <laughs> a that is it. And that village is that's Driftwood. That's the next article. Yeah. Um, I tell myself, whatever it is I'm about to do, it literally won't kill me. Like that is true. It, like, it won't kill yeah, you. Like I've made it this far. Yeah. Isn't I've that made crazy? it this many days. You will live through yeah. that. Yeah. It's really yeah. like insane. Yeah. I will live through this interview, however awkward and socially painful it is. I will well, get to the end of it. Well, this particular interview is just... It's so awkward. And and <laughs> I don't think it's awkward at all. I love it. I mean, you talk about, like, um, when you're, like, approaching someone, like, it took me most of the day before I even texted y'all asking to do this podcast. Because I was like, oh, maybe they want to do it. And, uh, the minute no. he sent a text, I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, no, me no, too. No, your exact quote was, fuck yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing journalism has definitely been a great experience so far. Um... And definitely working with you two has been really great. Uh, so I want to thank y'all for that. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I and can't also, do entertainment, so. I can't do news. <laughs> I, I just can't. Um, 
But yeah, so uh, thank you, uh, Jack, and thank you, Veronica, for your time, for talking with me a little bit about this, some of the challenges that journalists, uh, journalists face, both with mental health and just the career in general. So I want to give a big thank you to y'all. And again, I'm Trey Gillatine, and thanks for listening.